space is unfathomably massive. When gazing into the night sky, we often forget that we're among billions of planets and stars that make up the Milky Way galaxy. That's just one galaxy, itself one of over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe. There are probably way, way more. The infinite expanse sparks an undying curiosity in humanity, rooted deeply in the spirit of exploration and discovery. Our achievements have taken us all across the solar system, from the dense, inhospitable climate of Venus to the sci-fi dunes of Mars and the increasingly exciting moons of Jupiter. Humanity has answered a lot of questions. Now, as the twin Voyager spacecrafts leave our stellar neighborhood, we're getting a first-hand account of the uncharted cosmic coordinates beyond our sun's reach, places that have never been traveled to before, only hypothesized. Alarmingly, as the Voyager spacecraft reaches the outer shackles of the solar system, it has reached a celestial boundary that stunned scientists, revealing a fiery wall unseen in any astrophysical model. The veteran spacecraft must pass through a literal wall of plasma that shields us from interstellar forces, but it also seemingly exists to keep us in. How did it get there? Why does it exist? And can we get past it to the galaxy beyond? In 1977, two robotic interstellar probes, called Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, were sent into space as an American scientific mission. Their goal was to fly close to the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn and the ice giants Uranus and Neptune and send data back to Earth. As of 2023, both Voyager probes are still operational and have ventured beyond the outer boundary of the heliosphere into interstellar space. They continue to gather valuable information and transmit it back to Earth. Voyager 1 is moving at a speed of about 61,000 kilometers per hour, or 38,000 miles per hour relative to the Sun, and is about 23.8 billion kilometers, or 14.8 billion miles away from the Sun. Voyager 2 is moving at about 55,000 kilometers per hour, or 34,000 miles per hour, relative to the Sun, and is approximately 19.9 billion kilometers, or 12.3 billion miles away from the Sun. Both Voyager probes have already reached interstellar space, beyond the influence of the solar wind. However, it will take tens of thousands of years for them to leave the solar system because they need to go through the Oort cloud. The Voyagers have offered a wealth of information and stunning images of the gas giants and their moons. They've also made some significant discoveries, like the enigmatic details of Saturn's rings and the evidence of volcanic activity on Jupiter's moon Aya. The second spacecraft, Voyager 2, made significant discoveries about Uranus and Neptune, revealing the existence of additional moons and a magnetic field surrounding the planet. The Voyager's primary mission was completed in 1989, when Voyager 2 made a close flyby of Neptune, after more than 12 years in space, the Voyager Interstellar Mission, or VIM, was initiated as an extension of the original mission. In 2008, the Heliophysics Division of NASA Science Mission Directorate looked at things and decided that it was crucial to keep working on VIM. They suggested getting enough money and more help from the Deep Space Network. The primary objective of the VIM was to broaden the scope of exploration beyond the outer planets and reach the heliopause, the most extreme boundary where the sun's influence gives way to interstellar winds. Voyager 1 crossed the heliopause in 2012 and Voyager 2 followed suit in 2018. Crossing this boundary allowed both spacecraft to study interstellar fields, particles, and waves without being affected by the solar wind. Notable discoveries include a region with magnetic bubbles and the absence of an expected shift in the solar magnetic field. Except for the ultraviolet spectrometer, all instruments on Voyager 2's scan platform were turned off in 1998. On Voyager 1, the scan platform was supposed to be turned off in late 2000, but it was kept on to study UV emission from the upwind direction. Despite the end of gyro operations for Voyager 2 in 2016 and Voyager 1 in 2017, both spacecraft remain operational and are able to collect scientific data with their instruments. Although there has been some loss in subsystem redundancy, 
By around 2025, electrical power may no longer be sufficient to support the operation of scientific instruments. At that point, the collection of data and the operation of spacecraft will stop. As the probes are now venturing out, they're reaching distances never reached before and encountering phenomena never witnessed earlier. Which brings us to more recent discoveries. During 2018, NASA confirmed the existence of a hydrogen walls at the outer edges of the solar system, a discovery originally made by the Voyager spacecraft in 1992. NASA scientists are now investigating the outer boundary of the solar system, called the heliopause, and an apparent hydrogen shield, which was observed by the New Horizons spacecraft and previously by the Voyager mission. This wall marks the end of our sun's solar wind bubble and the accumulation of interstellar matter that cannot penetrate the solar wind, kind of like a literal shield. As the sun's powerful jets of matter and energy extend outward, they eventually weaken and are unable to push back the bits of dust and other matter floating in our galaxy. This creates a visible boundary with the remnants of solar wind on one side and a buildup of interstellar matter including hydrogen, on the other side. This is aligned with the sun's movement through the galaxy. A paper in the journal Geophysical Research Letters claims that New Horizons has detected additional ultraviolet light that is expected to be produced by a wall of galactic hydrogen. The two Voyager spacecraft, which were launched in the late 1970s and are NASA's longest traveling probes, previously detected a similar ultraviolet signal, but with more data, these claims were confirmed in 2018. Now, to really understand what's going on outside the solar system, we need to dive a little deeper into this region. Like we mentioned before, Voyager 2's entry into interstellar space follows that of Voyager 1, which achieved the same milestone in 2012. You see, both probes have similar data, such as the overall density of particles in interstellar space. Interestingly, they also observed some significant differences during their journey, which led to new questions about the movement of our sun through the galaxy. Understanding Voyager 2's latest discoveries requires understanding that the sun is not a calm, burning ball of light. Instead, it is a dynamic nuclear furnace that is hurling through the galaxy at a speed of approximately 450,000 miles per hour while orbiting the galactic center. The sun is filled with tangled and twisted magnetic fields, causing it to constantly release a stream of charged particles known as the solar wind from its surface. The sun's magnetic field is carried by this gust of solar wind as it moves outward. Eventually, it hits the interstellar medium, which is made up of debris from ancient stellar explosions that are spread out between stars. The solar wind and the celestial body don't mesh perfectly. Instead, the solar wind forms a sphere within the celestial body known as the heliosphere. Based on the data obtained from the Voyager spacecraft, it has been determined that this bubble extends approximately 11 billion miles from the sun's leading edge, encompassing the sun, all eight planets, and numerous outer objects orbiting the sun. The heliosphere plays a pivotal role in shielding all components within it including our delicate DNA, from the majority of the high-energy radiation emanating from the galaxy. The heliopause is the outermost boundary of the heliosphere. This boundary marks the entry into interstellar space. Understanding this threshold helps us understand how the sun travels through the galaxies, which in turn helps us understand other stars in the cosmos. Project scientist Ed Stone from Caltech said during the briefing, We are trying to understand the nature of that boundary where these two winds collide and mix. How do they mix, and how much spillage is there? On August 25, 2012, scientists got their first look at the heliopause when Voyager 1 went into interstellar space for the first time. They began to see something that left them scratching their heads. Research indicates that the interstellar magnetic field is about two to three times stronger than people thought. This means that interstellar particles can press on our heliosphere ten times more than expected. Despite Voyager 1's groundbreaking discoveries, there were still some limitations to its observations. In 1980, the device that measures plasma temperature stopped working. 
Voyager 2's plasma instrument continued to work properly, which allowed scientists to get a better idea of the heliopause when it crossed on November 5, 2018. For the first time, researchers were able to observe that when an object gets within 140 million miles of the heliopause, the surrounding plasma slows down, heats up, and becomes denser. The other side of the boundary revealed a temperature of at least 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which was higher than anticipated, a literal wall of fire. But this plasma remains thin and diffuse, resulting in an overall freezing average temperature around the Voyager probe. The two Voyager spacecraft have confirmed that the plasma in the local interstellar space is indeed denser than the plasma inside the heliosphere. This confirms scientists' expectations. Voyager 2 has also measured the temperature of the plasma in nearby interstellar space and found that it is colder than the plasma in the heliosphere. Voyager 2 also detected a slight increase in plasma density right before its exit from the heliosphere, which indicated compression along the inner edge of the bubble. Scientists haven't figured out why this compression happens on both sides. It was also revealed that the heliopause is not a tightly sealed region and there are leaks in both directions. Before Voyager 1 crossed the heliopause, it encountered interstellar particles that penetrated the boundary, similar to tree roots through rocks. In contrast, Voyager 2 saw a trickle of low-energy particles that went over 100 million miles beyond the heliopause. Another puzzling observation occurred when Voyager 1 approached within 800 million miles of the heliopause, entering an area where the outbound solar wind significantly slowed down. Compared to the stagnant layer seen by Voyager 1, Voyager 2 noticed that the solar wind was forming a different layer with nearly the same width. Heliophysicist Patrick Cohen, a program scientist at NASA headquarters, reveals that is very, very weird. It really shows us that we need more data. When you hear a scientist say something like that, you know, something's up. To figure out these mysteries, you need a good view of the heliosphere. Like the whole thing to be exact, while Voyager 2 exited from a different angle, Voyager 1 exited near the leading edge of the heliosphere, where it interacts with the interstellar medium. We don't have any information on the heliosphere's trail, which makes its overall form a bit of a mystery. Although the pressure exerted by the interstellar medium may maintain a roughly spherical form, it is also possible that it may possess a tail like that of a comet or a croissant-like appearance. Anyway, while other spacecraft are currently traveling outward, they won't be able to send back data from the heliopause. For example, NASA's New Horizons spacecraft is rapidly moving out of the solar system, but it will run out of power in the 2030s. It will fall silent more than a billion miles away from the heliosphere's outer edge. This hiccup has prompted Voyager researchers and others to call for a second interstellar probe. The proposed objective is a multi-generational, 50-year undertaking that aims to explore the outermost regions of the solar system and venture into uncharted territories that are beyond the reach of the solar wind. A new generation of scientists is eager to run with the baton, including physicist Jamie Rangan, who did her Ph.D., at Caltech with Voyager 1's interstellar data with Stone as her advisor. I think what she said would be a perfect end to today's video. It was amazing to work on this cutting-edge data from spacecraft that were launched before I was born and are still doing amazing science. It's just really exciting that humankind is interstellar. We have been interstellar travelers. Since Voyager 1 crossed, and again with Voyager 2's cross, it gets even more exciting because we can now compare two very different locations in the interstellar medium. So, what do you think? If we ever do send crewed spacecraft on interstellar missions, would they make it past this boundary? And what will the Voyager spacecraft find outside? Let us know in the comments below. While you're there, if you've enjoyed this video, consider hitting the subscribe button. As always, thanks for watching.